The emergence of COVID-19 led the World Health Organization to prescribe the usage of nose mask as a preventive measure. Along the line, we saw people use face shows to combat the virus, but unfortunately, it was met with a lot of misconceptions. This is what influenced a group of engineering faculty members here at the Ashesi University to work on a project where they developed a particle image velocimetry to test the efficacy of face shield. This is what we bring you on R&D Africa on AAU TV. My name is Mamie Kwa Utwa Kwa Nyame. When the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic hit, there was an effort made to make face masks locally, but not face shields. So we decided that we were going to look into pro providing a way that the local market could also make face shields. And in creating these face shields, we wanted to make sure that they were reliable. So to do that, we had to test how efficient they were in actually blocking particles from um, flowing around and under to uh, cause um, illness. We designed the face shield for COVID, since that's the era that we find ourselves in. But any other airborne virus presumably could be blocked the same way that the COVID-19 virus is. So if the face shield is able to block the droplets that someone produces when they speak or cough, if that person has COVID or if they have a flu, the face shield would be able to block either of those the same way. PIV is basically the study of um, particles or flow as it interacts with a particular body. So let's say, for instance, you wanted to check the aerodynamic properties of, let's say, a body. You would want to insert a particular flow into the system and study how the particles interact with that particular body. This project, for instance, is a continuation of an existing project where a different team had to design and build face shields. But it got to the point where they needed to test the efficacy of the face shields. That's how come we got into the picture. So we also had to do a couple of research, design and build um, to set up a low cost but effective flow visualization system. So far to our knowledge, this is the only PIV system we are aware of in Ghana. We haven't done a thorough search to know for sure. It's possible one might exist elsewhere. But to our knowledge, this is perhaps one of the first PIV systems that's been developed here in Ghana. As I mentioned, this PIV system in general exists around the world, but most people haven't tried making it themselves. But we decided to take on that challenge and see how best we could fabricated ourselves at a low cost so that we could still do high quality research here on campus. PIV is used to study or track the flow of particles over a body. So still with the given scenario that I gave, but more into specifics. Let's say I wanted to test out the aerodynamic properties of let's say an airfoil or a Formula One vehicle. You just have to like create a miniature version of it, stack it into the system and run your experiments. So aside from measuring the efficacy of the face shield, as we were focused on in the heights of the COVID-19 pandemic, we hope that this PIV system can be used very broadly. We have students on campus who are designing wind turbines or airplanes or drones or ships or robots and all of those things. We can understand how effectively they move through the air or through the water, how much lift, how much drag, how much thrust they produce. And in order to really measure those accurately, the PIV system is the gold standard for how we can do those measurements. Testing out the face shields, we considered um, several different scenarios. Um, for example, depending on the direction of the wind and the speed of the wind, you could have um, particles moving, changing. And with some of the scenarios, we had uh, particles going under the face shield. And note that we didn't only test our face shield, we tested the face shields that were on the market, which have a smaller surface area. So we realized that with our face shield, which has a larger surface area, you had less particles um, going around or under the face shield for these 
conditions. Chester University really prioritizes hands-on, project-based learning. And so SJC itself has an environment that encourages faculty and students to pursue projects, to pursue innovations that will add value, add creative solutions to what we have here on campus. So we're already finding ourselves in an environment that encouraged us to be innovative. So when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, myself and a few others in the engineering department decided to come together and see what we could do with our engineering skills to add value to help people here on campus during the pandemic. So I'm currently at the laboratory where all the work on the PIV system happens and I'm here with Jeremiah and Frederick. Jeremiah is going to take us through the process of uh, the process the PIV system went through and then uh, Frederick would also take us through the software where he would run us through how the test is being done. So I'll start with uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, okay. can you quickly take us through the process? Okay, so primarily a PIV system consists of four main subparts. That's the laser model, okay. the laser optics, the synchronizer, which is embedded inside this case, and, and most importantly, the camera. Okay. So how this works is that the laser model shoots light into the laser optics okay. to create a thin light sheet that's what we can see over here okay and the camera over there then captures whichever particles that are being displayed onto the thin light sheet that has been created okay. and also this system is actually modular so you can always add and subtract components to suit the specifications of the user okay okay now i want to talk about the features of uh, the PIV system that is built. I understand that uh, a lot of the PIVs out there are quite very expensive. However, mm -hmm. you managed to cut down costs. So maybe let's try to compare the features of your PIV system to the ones that find themselves in the same price range as yours. Okay, so for our system, like I said earlier on, it's modular, so you can always add and subtract okay. um, components. So for this one in particular, you are able to um, control it over a wireless network and you can also program the synchronizer to either um, make the laser model pulse at any frequency that you want and also increase or decrease the light intensity okay. um, of um, the laser model. Okay. And we also tried our possible best to make the entire setup very user friendly. Okay. So minimal um, buttons with just little expertise, you can just get the system running. Okay, okay, so if I get to you, the ones on the market are quite complex in terms of usage. Yes, so right now we are planning on reducing um, the thickness of the light sheet, thus um, the sheets of light that has been created, because from research realized the thinner the light sheet, the better. And we're also trying to expand um, the number of ports on the system so as to accommodate several laser models, so that maybe if the user wants to run concurrent experiments, that could be impossible. So first of all, we'll put on our protective laser glasses because long exposure to laser light is okay. not really good for your eyes. So okay. we'll do that, right? And to make sure that I show you the whole process, I'll just point out some of the things that we need to do to okay. actually make this run smoothly. Okay. So first of all, we have, so you can see these two buttons here. You see, okay. so those are the buttons that turn on the laser. So I'll turn them off. Okay. When I turn off, you see the laser go goes off. Mm -hmm. And we have a button also here that controls the uh, spray setup. This, okay. to, this is to help us ensure that we do not interfere with the flow or anything okay. that's going into the test section. Okay. The last thing that we will need to do is to press the record button okay. on the camera okay. to ensure that the video that we take, we are able to actually capture the, the flow and also do some analysis okay. of the flow later on our PC. Without the camera, how are you able to even get the information in the first place to even analyze it? So without the camera, we we can in investigate the flow by visual inspection, like okay. with our eyes. Okay. But doing that, we already have to put on protective mm -hmm. um, protective glasses because looking at the flow for a long time yeah. really hurts your eye. Yeah, my eyes are so already hurting. hurting. Yes. So we have to make sure that we have a camera set up that will um, help us mm -hmm. um, visualize the flow and save our eyes at the same time. Okay, so after you've captured the flow with the camera, how do you identify or determine if this particular facial you tested is efficient enough to uh, fight against the virus? 
So um, the software that we use uh, creates okay. creates arrows that um, represent the direction of the particle flow. Okay. And even without the arrows in the software, you can still see quite visibly where the particles are moving towards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. even though um, you can capture the movement of the particles with your eye when the laser is on the software gives you much more detailed analysis okay. of your flow innovation usually comes when different perspectives come together so partnerships in general are a good thing to bring research and innovation to the next level so a chassis would benefit if we're able to maybe combine forces with another university who has let's say a wind tunnel or a water tank or a towing uh, a water tunnel in which this flow visualization system could be attached. So since we've developed the flow visualization, if there's somebody that has another one of those key components, we could come together and do very detailed fluid mechanics research. Over here, I have the two main components to make up the face shield. So this is the plastic material. We chose this material because it's light and also very transparent. We wanted something to be easy for the user to wear without feeling uncomfortable and also be able to make them see through very easily. So this material was cut using a laser cutter. So we had a large sheet and we put in the model framework and then we cut it using a laser cutter. And over here we have the um, headband. So we used, we wanted to make use of local, low cost materials. So we had a local uh, manufacturer that was a tailor get us these headbands we could use using Afri African material, which was supposed to represent our local context. So I'm going to assemble the face shield right now. Um, so, first thing you have to do is to pass the band here through the lower hole and then bring it up here and attach it to the strip here. And it's for the three of them to make sure that it's secure. So, and you have to make sure that it's very tight so that it doesn't come off while you're wearing it on the Velcro. And the last one. And once you're done, you can just wait. So, um, yeah. yeah, and I have a free shoot. I think COVID-19 has shown us that innovation can, can occur everywhere. Uh, even if we just feel like we're in our own corner somewhere, uh, if we put our minds to it and we put our Put our energy behind it it's possible to actually come out with innovation the piv system is something that has always been relegated to very very high end research facilities but here we are and here's the case where we've been able to come out with one ourselves using um, just dedication creativity and uh, the energy of some of our alumni here at Ashesi. so anyone out there who's interested in pursuing something innovative, I would encourage you to go for it. You never know what you're capable of, of coming out with until you, until you try. This is the Africa we want. This is the Africa we deserve. A continent filled with numerous and mind-blowing innovations and inventions. And this is R&D Africa, the only show that puts the spotlight on innovations and inventions. My name is Mami Kwa Utoa Kwanyame, and this is where we end today's episode. Do follow AAU TV on all our social media platforms for more content.